Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. This is the video series where I take a look at every single pattern in a collection, whether that's all the patterns in a seasonal release from the big five or a indie pattern designer's entire catalog. Today we're looking at all of the new Vogue spring patterns. Um, and yeah, I just kind of take a look at them, give you my first impression thoughts about how they fit, about fabrication and fabric choices that you might have outside of what they recommend, um, fit things that I see, you know, just all the usual stuff. So if you like sitting around and chatting about patterns, this is the video for you. So without further ado, let me find and make sure that we're only going to be looking at the spring patterns. They made it a little bit difficult to, yeah, like why is there only one paper pattern available now? Um, a little bit difficult to navigate the website now that everybody's under one thing. Um, and I think I just want spring. Okay, this is probably going to be it. All right, so first things first, we have a Mrs. One Shoulder Dress and Pants. And then you can choose between paper and PDF here. Okay, interesting. And then sizing, we have all the sizes in one, a, a small to a 1X. Okay, loose fitting, one shoulder neck dress, one shoulder neck dress. What's a neck dress? It has neck facings, invisible side seam zipper, length variations, and narrow hem. View B has purchased lace trim. Fitted pants have flat front, side front pockets, elastic back, and narrow hem. Shoulder dress and pants. Okay. All right. So getting strong, like, Holston vibes, right? We are being thrown right back into, like, the dynasty of the 80s, but maybe even some of the 70s. Like, definitely a look. We have the one shoulder, and I'm trying to just see kind of what is happening. It's, it looks pretty simple. One shoulder, no seams anywhere that I can see. We do have a side zipper somewhere. You can see the turned back hem is about two inches probably, so that's really nice and substantial. But at the, at the hem of the dress, it's a baby hem. Or you can do, well, and you can do these pants. I hope we get a lot more poses than those two. Those two poses are very covered up so it's hard to hard to see. I'm also going to check the notions and make sure there's like elastic or stay tape or something happening to help that from stretching out. And I also wonder if it's cut on the bias cuz see how these little chevrony things are going sideways? That makes me think it's cut on the bias, which would put this on the straight grain, so that would also help. I don't know if they're going to give us that information just here on the website, but that's where my mind goes. Then this one's giving, I guess they're going for like a bridal situation. Again, very simple. I don't see a lot of seaming at all. This feels a little bit awkward, like maybe just a little bit too, uh, I don't know, maybe this is either supposed to go up to here to the knee to help some of this have somewhere to go, or it should be shortened, one of the two. Um, but yeah, this feels like this break should be up here one way or the other, and that would help with all of this. Wow, okay, that's it. So picture-wise, or, or design-wise, one shoulder seam, a quote-unquote side seam with an opening for your arm, then this is where the zipper is. And that's it. I'm not even sure that there's a seam like up in here. And then this does come up easily adjustable that um, where I was talking about where the break of her knee is. And then the pull on pants are kind of a throwaway. Loose fitting one shoulder. This is the same thing. So it doesn't talk about it being cut on the bias, but I don't know if you can find fabric like that. That's chevroni sideways. Charmeuse, linen blends, rayon, chalet, silk, crepe. Yeah, you need something with a decent amount of drape to it. The less drapey it is, the more it'll stand away from your body, the more like toga it'll look rather than falling in on you and being like you just wrapped yourself in sheets like sexily. <laughs> toga versus like sexy sheets, I guess, are our options. Um, okay, so if 
fabric wise or size wise, eight to twenty two is the is the numerical equivalent of small to one x. And they're giving us the finished hip measurement. Is it the finished hip of the pant or the finished hip of the dress? I don't know. And then also they don't have body measurements on here. So pretty useless all around. Like I don't really know how you're supposed to pick your size, I guess, unless it's off of the finished garment, the finished hip measurement. That seems risky. Am I just missing the body measurements? No, very strange, very strange. I mean, I get that the fit is a little bit like mm, not a super big deal, but it is a little bit. Oh, and then notion wise, invisible zipper, lace trim, and then for C, the elastic. So yeah, there is no nothing in here other than interfacing probably. I don't know, now I'm nervous. I would definitely be doing my own kind of research on this here, making sure that doesn't stretch out and then doing something to figure out a size. I guess on the envelope, you'd have to go to a store to find it. Those of you that don't have a store easily, I don't know. That's strange. I've never not seen, I guess, wait, are they, yeah, there's probably a body measurement chart online somewhere. So you'd have to dig that up, then compare it to the finished garment measurements of the hip. And then you're guessing whether that those are the pant hip finished or the dress hip finished. Or is, it's too much. It's too much. Oh, but all the sizes are in one. So you really would just buy the one and then figure it out later. So I guess that is a little bit better. Still though. Still though. Okay, so moving on. We've got a lounge top robe and pants. Sizing is 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. That's about as good as it's going to get for Vogue. Five in each um, from eight to 26 outside of like any women's patterns that I don't think Vogue is doing yet. That's about as good as it's going to get. So semi-fitted top or robe has covered shoulder pads, flared sleeves, snap closure and belt. View A has split sleeves. View B has lace trim and side front pockets. Wide leg pants have front pleats, side pockets. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Wide leg pants have front pleats, side front pockets, and fly front zipper. View D has lace trim. Wow, that's just like a lot of words. Beautiful, though. This looks like let's go out. This looks like something. I don't. I, first thing that comes to mind is Halle Berry. I'm not sure why. I think I saw um, oh one of the housewives from Beverly Hills. Oh, I can't remember her name. Nikki Hilton's mom's. Nick, the P Hilton girl's aunt, whatever her, she went to like the piece, the people's choice awards or something. And she had something similar to this just recently. That was really cool looking. I don't know this. I feel like you could dress up with not the same pattern pants and have like a going out top, but the robe is really pretty with the lace trim and the pockets. Yeah. Let's see if they show us more of the pants. This one is a little bit too short in the shoulder length. This should kind of just go bloop, like fall right off your arm. It's caving in like that a little bit. The shoulder pad, there's not enough space in the sleeve head for the shoulder pad and her shoulder. It needs to be flatter. Yeah, flatter. But small, small little thing most people probably wouldn't notice. And if you were going to make this a going out top, you'd probably want to address this gape here, gap, the gaping that's happening here. Um, maybe because they just didn't fold it right. It does look like it's not laying perfectly where the seam is on the seam is laying flat. So that could be it. Other than that, though, it is really pretty. Hers is going to be hard to tell for the shoulder because she's got her hand propped up on this thing. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Have you ever seen the movie? uh oh no um can't buy me love and she gets really really drunk at the it's not the prom party but her boyfriend's supposed to come home from college her football boyfriend and she gets really really wasted and calls out mcsteamy mcdreamy's character in that like white pant and tank top outfit anybody is that like that's not too niche of a reference you remember that right Turns out that girl, 
did not have a very good life. She ended up getting like hooked on drugs and died super young. But I was obsessed with her. And anytime I see a Volkswagen convertible, oh, I just, I, there's nothing more that I wanted than that. And the gray and white striped sweater she wears in that car wash scene. <laughs> Okay, we can chat separately if you're as into that movie as I apparently am. There's the backs, really pretty. Let's look at her shoulder. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. Just like falling right off that shoulder pad. I mean, it's pretty. It's a really beautiful nightgown. I don't know that I need to be that fancy for lounging, but it is beautiful. Charmeuse, crepe de chine, hammered satin. Oh, hammered satin would be stunning. Um, they even have it at Joanne's. Is it called hammered? I don't think so. I think it's called, oh, oh no, I can't remember what it's called. Something similar to hammered satin. It's really, really stunning. You can find it in the like special occasion fabrics and it just, you can just tell by the feel of it. It's like less shiny, more drapey, hammered, maybe it is hammered satin. I don't think it is, but something similar. Um, and then again, they're throwing in linen blends. They're just really, <laughs> linen blends feels like a stretch, but the rest of it makes perfect sense. Lining fabrics. Okay. So covered shoulder pads, lace trim, zipper, hook and bar closure. Oh yeah. Cause that was the pant. I got so wrapped up in my story that I didn't even think to consider that these were actually a legit silk pant. Hold on, that kind of changes everything. I had assumed these were going to be elastic. No, these are like epic silk pants. Those aren't lounge pants. Somebody's lounging in pants with a hook and bar closure. Okay, the most we're going to see of the back of the pants is this. Wait a minute, those are actually like kind of stunning. Forget the robe. The pants are gorgeous. Two pleats in the front, one dart in the back. Wide leg, loose fitting everywhere except for the waist, and then slant pockets. Guys, those are super pretty. And then on this one, are we not going to get any measurements again? Is that what's happening? Is that the new normal now? We're not even going to get finished garment measurements on this one. Okay, getting annoyed, but I'm gonna keep powering through. Next, we have something, I mean, not, not very unsimilar. Marcy Tilton lounge sets. So loose fitting split neck tops have stitched down neck facing set in sleeves, bust darts and side slits. Okay. Loose fitting elastic waist pants have side seam pockets and length variations. Yeah, this is more of what I was expecting whenever you say lounge. So they've got a low hip length one and then a knee length, a knee length one with the capris. Marcy, Marcy, what? This feels, I bet if we looked at the line drawings on this, there's like two. Yeah, I mean, guys, this is like your basic tunic. We've seen this a thousand and one times. Um, wow. That feels like she got busy and was like, oh, shoot. I have to turn in this Vogue pattern. Here, let me just pull up this one that I have from like 20 years ago. And then the elastic waist pant. I will say the, oops, the pocket bag not being floppy is the only redeeming thing about this entire set. The rest of it, I don't know. I guess if you don't have a tunic, split neck tunic like this, it might not be bad to have, but I don't know that I'd pay Vogue prices for something like this, that's for sure. So, cotton crepe machine, drapey rayon chalet, pil uh, silk poly charmeuse, silk poly rayon crepe machine, very specific. Um, she's going lightweight, drapey to somewhat structured, but you could make these out of just about anything. Like where's the linen blend now? Linen blend would be perfect for this. <laughs> um, all in one size or all sizes are included in one pattern, extra small to extra large, no finished garment measurements. Cool. Cause they would rather give us this French stuff than finished garment measurements. Cause that seems like it would be so difficult for them to produce two envelopes, one for Europe and one for the U.S. Just saying. I'm feeling snarky all of a sudden. <laughs> Vogue is like sitting me over the edge. All right, next we have a jacket, six to 14 and then 16 to 24. 
fitted line jacket has princess seams, slightly extended shoulders, shoulder pads, long two-piece sleeves with darted cap. Okay. Button trim on sleeves and front welt pockets with flaps. View A has peak lapels. View B has a shawl collar. Okay. So Vogue is just leaned in to the shoulder pad, it seems. We're going to look at these from the side, I hope, because that's really where they stand out. It's kind of like a like a cowl ish situation happening that's why you're getting this look so it's the statement sleeve and a statement shoulder statement shoulder sleeve ish situation shawl collar princess seam welt pocket with the flap beautiful and hopefully these are those pants from that loungewear set and then here is the peak lapel same thing fit looks absolutely stunning absolutely perfect on both women yeah I mean this is what happens when okay I know you guys are thinking like who wants to draw that much attention to your shoulders it look like linebackers blah, blah blah but look how snatched her waist looks like she looks like she has a two inch waist and then it slightly flares out and this accentuates kind of that tricking your eye too it just makes her waist look so small and they have a little jumpsuit thing like this from last from like fall 20 two maybe fall or winter 22 this could be one of those jumpsuits this like all in one okay they're still not going to show us this pleat at the shoulder but that really is what is kind of special and unique about this jacket versus Vogue's other blazers we still have the princess seams center back seam you can see the two-piece sleeve which is really nice and the buttons now these are they said a, did they say button placket Mm, button trim on sleeve. So I think those are non-working buttons, I think. Button trim. I'm not entirely sure what that... Well, it does look like they come apart. I don't know what button trim means. But yeah, really pretty. I wish they showed us that detail a little bit better. Hmm, really nice. Okay, now let's see. It says... Brocade linen, midweight crepe, tweed wool suiting, lined, I think fully, yep. And then shoulder pads, a button for the center front, and eight buttons. So those are working buttons. Finish garment measurements, but no body measurements. That's just so strange to me. Like, what's the point of having one without the other either way? And if you're only going to give us one, my goodness, give us the body measurement so at least we know which one to buy. I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Why? We're, I feel like we're going backwards. We went backwards from the last collection where it was all it all made sense. None of this makes sense. So you'd have to go get the get the body measurement chart offline somewhere. Maybe it's even yeah here, and then like print that out. Or refer back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, how obnoxious. Just not a great user experience, as they call it. Okay, so another set of jackets. 8 to 16, 18 to 26. Lined, semi-fitted, collarless jackets. Have princess seams, two, sorry, long two-piece sleeves. Shoulder pads. Patch pockets with button and buttonhole. UA has button front closure and contrast sleeve bands and view b has purchased trim very still much like dynasty vibes right especially the length of it like we could make an argument that this like tweed look is could be like chanel but chanel's gone cropped for like a long time i don't know if we've seen like a long hip length jacket like this in a while again the fit is stunning they are impeccably tailored and they all both look great but I'm not wearing this. Even with like the slick down hair and the big jewelry, that almost makes it worse. The styling. This is the closest, I guess. But it's even still, I'm not, where am I going in that? Okay, so here's the full look. Yeah, it's just, it is Vogue, right? It is elevated. Vogue is supposed to be elevated, it's supposed to be couture, it's supposed to be all of those things. But isn't it also supposed to be wearable? And like, I just don't know of many people whose lifestyle warrants this like the one percent 
okay, great. Well, how many of the 1% are sewing their own clothes? Like zero, I bet. Um, maybe Arbany Nola, who is the former Miss USA, Miss Universe, who also sews. Like, okay, she'd have a reason to wear something like this. Very special occasion, very niche, like going on talk shows and appearances and things like that. But in a normal person's life, where are we going? Not to Target. I'm not going to Target in that. In no way. I'd rather wear one of those crazy dresses to Target than this. I'd rather wear that robe, the loungewear robe to Target, than wear this. <laughs> okay. Oh, did I miss like a bunch of pictures? Probably. I'm over this one. Can you tell? Um, okay, so here we are. We're here. All right. So still okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Maybe if I lived on Fifth Avenue, I would go eat at, you know, the top of the Eiffel Tower in that. That's not in, <laughs> that's not on Fifth Avenue, but you know what I mean. What's the fancy place at Central Park there? Ivy House or what is it called? Something to do with foliage. I can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, somewhere fancy. Okay. Um, all right, so crepe, gabardine, linen, midweight crepe, wool blends. Yeah, I guess they're kind of going for, they didn't even say um, tweed, which is what I think the white one is. But yeah, kind of like your suiting-esque type of stuff. Yeah. And then finished garment measurements again, but no body measurements. So, Wow. We even have all this space here. We couldn't put a little chart right here. All right. <clears throat> Next. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. You can even tell the look on her face is completely changed. High rise pleated shorts or pants. Yes. Oh, these are the green pants that match that suit jacket. Great. Um, loose fitting through hips. Have waistband and hook and bar closure. Belt carriers, side front pockets, back welt pockets, fly front zipper, and cuffs. I love the little short. Oh, and it's like a crossover band too, which is really nice because that kind of flattens the tummy a little bit. I mean, tell me she isn't like the coolest girl at the country club. She is. You can't tell me otherwise. And then this one. Yeah, beautiful. Let's see what we can tell about the crotch curve and whatnot. It does seem a little bit long in the rise, which better than the other way. Okay, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. A little bit of something happening here, right? But that is just so specific to her body. I'm not getting like, if most people put this on right out of the envelope, I think that they would be fine. Let me see hers. Oh, hers is a lot of extra thigh room uh, extra fabric in the thigh interesting that's seeing these two women side by side like this really does help you see how I'm pretty sure they made the same sample right same sample size for both of them you can just really tell how different things can be from one person to the next in the crotch area but everything else about them looks really good yeah she could be shifting her weight slightly to look over her shoulder but I don't even I don't think that's it I think there's also just too much fabric there so just a little something to check on yourself. So, gabardine, linen, medium weight wovens, twill, wool suiting. Yeah, all your bottom weights. Lining, I'm pretty sure is just for the pockets and the maybe the waistband. Interfacing, uh, probably for just for the waistband. And then finished garment measurements. I will say normally I'm a 22. I don't know. I don't know. What's the, I don't know. I don't know. I can't assess it, but I guess, I guess you're looking for like one inch in the waist and anything three and above for the hip, I guess. They are really cute. I have a lot of really cute shorts patterns. I need to just like knock out the pattern alterations so that I can just like make them all one day. Okay, here is Mrs. Skirt in two lengths. Whoa. Fitted online skirt has double breasted front button opening welt pockets and top stitching. 
view A, slim fit skirt is short length. View B, floor length skirt is flared and has godets. Both skirts have stitched hems. Oh my word. A floor length double breasted godet skirt. And they put her in like a straw hat as if she's like on vacation. It is linen, but still, that's a lot. That's a lot happening. Maybe, wh why didn't they throw this in the holiday collection and then make it out of like crepe back satin or even a tweed or something? This just feels like the most. And then this cutie little pencil skirt. They're both cute. I want to see what it's like without her hand in that, in her pocket. Are they going to, or even her. It does look like they are puckering a little bit. That means that the pocket placement is not contoured, which you can easily do, not super hard, but um, you would think for the prices of Vogue that they would have done that for you. Yeah, the back of this looks exceptional. A little bit of a drop here, but not too much. The rest of it looks really good. And then they put this one on her. She has a less full bum, so there's a little bit of extra room here. Look at this. One, two, three. I mean, it is beautiful. It's just a lot. Maybe, oh, I would have to like completely re-envision this. I'd have to like, fine with the white linen, but maybe the godets can be out of something like, oh God, lace? I don't know. Something. It just, it feels real heavy. It feels really heavy. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so cotton drill linen, midweight denim, tweed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All of those. This one you can probably make out of any bottom weight. This one, I think you have to really consider weight and movement. Otherwise you're dragging that thing around all day long. Yeah. Interesting concept. I'm just not, oh, I want to love it. Part of me is like, I could get there. I could get there with this. Um, but it needs to feel lighter and I almost feel like if you went with like a drapier fabric to make it lighter or like even if it were like the rayon linen blend that everyone loves and you can get it at like style maker fabrics and places like that I have that green jumpsuit made out of it really drapey really beautiful even that jumpsuit is heavy it just gets really heavy and then if you did like 100% linen that would be lighter weight then it would be more structured. So then it would stand away from you. So then it'd be even more crazy. And then if you go like really lightweight, like a chalet or something, then I feel like the double breastedness of it all would not land right. Yeah, this one's feeling, maybe it's like the combination of the double breasted plus the go days plus the fab, the seasonal choices of the fabric. Again, I think if you made this out of something for a gala, for a special event, for a wedding, for, you know, something like that, out of a special occasion fabric, it would be so much more intentional. But them trying to make it a more casual thing is confusing. I do really want to love that though. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. <laughs> okay. We have a button front shirt, sizes 6 to 14, and then 16 to 24. Loose fitting shirt has concealed button front opening, pointed collar, collar band, and flange shoulder. I cannot tell you if I've ever seen a flange shoulder. Oh, maybe a long time ago. Shirt includes long set in sleeves with pleats, button cuffs, and placket opening. Okay, so the only thing that makes this different than your typical button front shirt is the flange. So the flange is basically like a giant single pin tuck. Um... This is all doubled over fabric, and so it creates this humongous, like, pleat that never, that never releases. And so you have this, like, extra little, like, I don't know, little folded piece right here on your shoulder. It's super cool. Um, very, very high-end. I think that if you were to make this, wear this, people would think that it was, like, Rick Owens or something along those lines that, you know, it definitely looks designer and high-end. So I love that. And it's not too cuckoo. It's not too basic. It's right in the middle. But for sure, I think solids are best. This color block thing, I could, I don't know, do without probably. Um, 
black and white is having a moment. I get it. I know why they did it, but I don't know. It doesn't really translate for me. But neither does a striped one. But I also don't love stripes like that, like that kind of stripe. There, you can get a good shot of the flange there. There it is. Maybe if it were like color blocked in more fun colors, like when you do like hot pink and orange, maybe that would be more my speed. But yeah, it is really cool. I do love it. I do love it. Now, can you take any bodice that has this hem to shoulder princess seam and add a flange? Yes. <laughs> yes, you absolutely can. <laughs> um, but if you want all the work done for you, or if you don't have a shirt with princess seams like this, then you would want to maybe just buy this one. Okay, Shally, cotton shirting, crepe de chine, lightweight wools, poplin, and rayons. Yeah, your lightweight shirting fabrics are probably ideal. But you could go silky. Silky would be fun. All right. Next is this. Okay, this little number. Mrs. Top with sleeve variations. Loose fitting, ruffled baby doll tops have lined body, stand up collar, front neck gathers gathered set in sleeves button cuffs and back slit opening collar fastens with buttons and elastic hoops whoa okay okay sorry i'm just processing that there's a lot to take in from version a to version b um what we have <laughs> what do we have what we have is a kind of like a yoke with a ruffle into your bodice into a waist seam with a ruffle into a peplum-ish situation with a ruffle, long sleeves that I think are gathered at the head, a cuff with more ruffles. And then here's the eyelet version. I, oh man, again, I want to love it. And I'm very close, but something is not landing. I wonder if it's the length of this ruffle, if it needs, to, if it would, longer but then oof I don't know I don't know maybe more pictures she hates it look at her face this one doesn't mind it as much yeah like even how they styled it would be probably how I would also style it Ugh. maybe oh man I guess what I would probably do is if I were forced to make this like if I were on the British sewing bee and they also allowed you to do hacks on that show I would add another ruffle here and make it a dress I think it's just a lot for a top a lot to style a top with this much going on and then also have it compete with whatever bottom that you're pairing it with the pencil pant is a little bit better better than those pleated shorts and the drapier fabric certainly helps it fall in on the body a little bit, but I don't wear this. I don't dress like this. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, here's some pictures of the back. So apparently there's supposed to be, oh, the slit with the buttons and the hoops. Okay, maybe sleeveless? Maybe the sleeves just make it be, make it too much. Do the line drawings make it look cuter? No, sometimes that happens sleeveless can we imagine it without this is that any better probably not maybe it's because it's the collar plus the sleeves plus the ruffles plus the bottoms you know what i mean it's a lot it's a lot a lot a lot batiste eyelet georgette and lace hmm the moment that someone makes this and styles it like i can see um Oh, who is it online? Oh, her I can picture her face. She wrote a book. Uh, she always makes Vogue and always makes it look amazing. Even Erica Bunker does a decent job of styling things that are hard to style. What is her name? Oh, oh, it is on the tip of my tongue. Um, anyways, she would probably make this and style it in a way that I could get behind. The moment that someone does that, the moment that someone does it, in a way that I deem like wearable in my style, I'll grab it right away. I just need help getting that to that end point. 
Um, I'm basics with a twist, and this is a basic with too many twists. It's not even a basic anymore. So I think that's the problem I'm having with it. It's just it's just a lot for me. But I do like it, and I know that if you made it, I would love your version. You know, it's not one of those things that I think everybody's going to be, like, looking crazy in. There's going to be some really cute versions. Okay, apparently we just skipped the holiday collection, and we're just throwing them all in here on spring. Okay, so close fitting, underlined, and lined, open back trumpet dress, has princess seams, bow detail halter neck, which I can already tell is stunning, and back straps with hook and bar closures, invisible back zipper, view B has a train, separate pattern pieces for cup sizes, 6 to 14 and 16 to 24 on the size range. Look at the bow back. You could put any celebrity in this and send them down the runway. It'd be Chanel, 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 Dior, Dior, Dior. Speaking of which, is anybody watching the new show, the new look? Let me know in the comments if you're watching. What do we think? I've seen two episodes. Don't spoil anything. Um, and then they did this version a little bit more casual. Listen, if I had somewhere to go, this is what I would make. I love everything about this, but no, I'm, where am I going? My sofa would not appreciate the glamour that is being represented here. But look at these bows. Super cute. Everything about it is just wonderful. I love that it looks like a bow tie. A million percent. If you have somewhere to go, military ball, a wedding gown. Come on, that's a wedding gown. Just make it whatever color you want your wedding gown to be. I'd get married just to wear that. That's so pretty. I don't know if Dan would agree, but <laughs> I feel like I, I planned something for us because I want to wear this dress. He'd probably think it's like dinner or something. And then I show up in a wedding dress. He'd be real confused. Okay, brocade, duchess, satin, mikado, silk, fail. Yes, underlining, muslin, and organza. I think that's just for structure. And then interfacing. You don't even need that much. Well, you do. When you add the fabric plus the underlining plus the lining. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of fabric there. It's pricey, but it's gorgeous. What about prom? Prom? It's a little it's a little mature for prom, right? I don't know many girls be wearing that to prom, but okay, now we have this number. Also cool. Oh, this is a Badgley Mishka. Okay. So 8 to 16, 18 to 26 on the size range here. Close fitting line dress has sweetheart neckline, balloon sleeves, invisible back zipper with hook and eye closure. Below elbow length sleeves have opening with continuous lap, elastic loop, and covered button closure. Okay. Oh. Okay. So everything but the sleeves is pretty traditional, right? Like I could see this dress in any decade. Um, the sweetheart with the, like the, almost the draped um, bust cups. And then they added this really dramatic sleeve, which just really elevates it and makes it kind of on trend for today. But you don't like that? Leave the freaking sleeve off. Pretty. Elegant. These are nice. I don't have anywhere to go, like I said, but if I did, look out. Fish eye darts in the back. You know, I love those. So heavy satin. Oh, wait. Crepe back satin, four ply crepe, and stretch crepe are what they recommend for the main fabric. Contrast one. Heavy sil heavy satin or Mikado. Contrast two. Oh, continuous lap, sleeve stay, and sleeve binding out of crepe de chine or silk-like broadcloth. Whoa. Lining fabric, two types of interfacing. I mean, get it. Get with it. It's Badgley Mishka, right? So when they send over the sample, they're going to have you make it as similar to the sample as possible. And that's how they do their stuff. Very couture. Very high-end. It would be a lot of fun to sew for sure. Okay, now we have this green number by Tom and Linda Platt, Incorporated. <laughs> Close fitting, lined bias cut. I knew it was bias cut. Halter dress, halter style dress, has front neck gathers, 
neck binding in cases bias collar that ties on the back. Dress has back neck slit opening with hook and eye closure and baby hems. Kind of a departure from Tom and Linda. But stunning. And I've said it once. I've said it twice. I've said it 5,000 times. Bias cut looks exceptional on anyone, on anybody. And it actually looks better the more curvier you are. I promise that you just have to take my word for it. Or go to like a Nordstrom or somewhere and find a bias cut dress. When you pull on it side to side, it should stretch kind of a lot. It should not be stretchy fabric, but it should stretch like on like it's on the bias grain. Put it on. See what it does. That's what I did. I was at a Goodwill and I saw one and I said, you know what? I'm always worried about these bias cut dresses. And I put it on and I was like, who is she? I did not end up getting the dress because I had nowhere to wear it, but I did feel like a million bucks and I definitely spun around a few times in the dressing room by myself. Um, but yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. I wish 16 year olds would wear stuff like this to the prom, but they're not. They're wearing crop tops and that's fine. Crop tops and that linen go day skirt probably is what they would be asking for. And the only thing I think that would make this better is if these were like wider and longer. So you'd have like a little train coming from the bow. That would be fun. But yeah, look at the line drawings. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. All right. Charmeuse, crepe de chine, Georgette, and that hammered satin. What is that name of that stuff? Maybe it'll come to me this time. It is called shoot. Maybe it's not even, no, it's definitely satin. Sanded, sanded satin, sanded satin is what it's called. Oh, thank you, brain. Sanded satin from Joanne. If they still have it, check it out. I love that stuff. Um, lining, crepe back satin, mid-weight crepe. So that's the fabric and that's the lining. Okay. And then interfacing naturally with silk organza. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tom and Linda. Awesome. Gorgeous. Those are all, those three, these three gowns are absolutely beautiful. And I'd hope that one day I'd have somewhere cool to wear them. Um, but I'm not one of those people that's going to add to the stash in the hopes that maybe one day I'm going to go to like a ball. That's not me. I'll just wait. Um, okay. This is a two piece dress. Fitted button front shirts have pointed collar, neck band, set in sleeves, bust darts, top stitching, and shaped hem. View A top, I think, has patch pockets and below elbow sleeves with split cuff. View B top is cut crosswise, meaning not bias cut, but cut on the cross grain. Has placket sleeve opening and button cuffs. Close fitting skirts. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, what's close fitting about that? Loose fitting skirts are cut crosswise again and have waist pleats, invisible side zipper with hook and bar closure and horsehair braid on trim. Wow. Okay. Which is why they're able to do this on, um, border prints because border prints run along the selvage. So that's why it's cross green, but it's a top and a skirt. So for sure, who's doing a lot of this? Is it one of the princesses, the Dutch, is it, is it Megan or, or Kate? One of them does this a lot with the big ball gown, but then the casual t-shirt, I feel like that, not t-shirt, but casual button up. I feel like that's Meghan Markle's style. And then here's the horse hair that really creates that really beautiful wavy kind of helps the hem stand away from the body. And then this kind of looks like a dress, but it's not. I don't know about this huge velvet belt and then the black velvet bag, but I can see where they're going with it. Oh, they took the belt off for this one. Okay. Yeah. I think when we see the line drawings, we'll realize that it's really just a traditional button up top and a pleated skirt. They just made it a little bit more intentional by putting them together. But if you have eight, each of these individually, neither one of them are super special, very much considered basics. Um, so a I mean, really, A and D, these can go for all of them. They're just really trying to make the long sleeve top and shorter skirt the border prints. Maybe the floor length skirt, there's not enough fabric to do it out of a border print, which is why 
they've separated it out like this, but you can definitely make the long sleeve shirt out of any of these fabrics as well as the midi skirt. Poplin sateen chaton taffeta and then double border prints. You could also do a single border print, but you'd have to buy twice as much of it. And then you might be able to do the floor length gown. Um, and then interfacing. So I guess it's self-lined. Yeah. Buttons, invisible zipper, blah, 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 horsehair braid. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here's another two-piece dress. Close-fitting, lined, peplum top, has princess seams, square neckline, neck bands, front zipper, set in sleeves with shoulder pads. I'm sorry, shoulder pleats thin shoulder pads, and matching belt with covered buckle. Fitted pencil skirt has waist darts, invisible back zipper, hook and bar closure, back pleats, and invisible hem. Separate cup sizes. Okay. I mean, cutie little peplum with the exposed zipper, square neckline. She does look really rich. Really rich. Really expensive. But also kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of a throwback to the 80s, maybe late 80s. Um, and also still feels modern-ish at the same time. It would be so much easier for me to be like, oh my god, I love this so much if I could picture myself wearing it somewhere. But I can't. So I have to kind of admire it as it as if I, like when I watch the Grammys and I'm watching people walk down the red carpet, I can admire those for what they are. And also at the same time, know that I will never wear them. <laughs> that's what this is like I'm just I'm in admiration of it but it's never something I'm going to be like love 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 you know because I just I would never wear it this is cute little detail here the accordion hem accordion pleat um and the pleated sleeve does look really pretty the fit again impeccable I don't think I've mentioned fit hardly at all in this entire Vogue collection. Now that I'm looking at the line drawings though, it's giving a little bit like Renaissance. It's giving a little bit like, where's my corset, <clears throat> right? I will say I do love how the pencil skirt has two pleats on in the front and the back per side. That's nice. And then fabric, Ankara, brocade, Shantong, and wool blends. Charmeuse or taffeta for your lining. Fully lined, top and close to it, close to it for sure. Okay, like if I were, you know what this is? This is what those girls that um, the lawyers on suits. This is what they wear. The woman that runs the law firm, Pearson. This is what she wears. Like high-powered attorneys in a big city, taking names. Okay. Now we have Mrs. Dress in two lengths with sleeve variations. Lined, fit and flare dress. Fitted through the bust and waist. Has bias, ruffle, detail, tracing the yoke and neckline. Obsessed. Underlined bodice. Has princess seams. Extended shoulders. Shoulder pads. Gathered set in sleeves ending in button cuffs with continuous lap opening. Wow. Dress includes front button and self bias loop opening. Invisible back zipper, baby hems. View A has short sleeves. View B has full length sleeves. Whoa. This on the surface looks like a simple little cute little dress, right? But no. She's underlined. She's bias cut ruffles. She's continuous lap. This is, this is absolutely something I would wear to Target but absolutely not something I have the time to make to wear to Target. If I'm going to put in this much time and energy, I better be going somewhere nicer than Target. But man, it is really, really cute and really beautiful. Even this long one. The brown with white polka dots will always remind me of Pretty Woman when she goes to the polo match. In case you're wondering, my movie reference for that. Yeah, it's just a lot of work for a dress that ends up coming out like something you'd see on the calls. It's honestly the way that dresses are probably supposed to be made. 
and we're just so used to them being so like thrown together, use a surge or blah, 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 that now this seems like too much work. But they're calling for Crepe to Sheen, Crepe Georgette, Rayon Chalet, or Voile. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit more stable than those fabrics. I thought the floral one especially was um, cotton, I thought. Maybe a shirting, maybe. Maybe it was Voile. Yeah, beautiful. Would love to make the quick and dirty version of this. Okay, next we have... Dress in two lengths, line dresses, fitted through the bust, have raglan sleeves, front button and bias loop closure, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure. View A has a flared skirt with ruffle hem, side seam pockets, stitched hems, and below elbow length sleeves with barrel cuffs. View B has long sleeves, continuous lap opening, button and loop closure on cuffs. Okay, again, I think when we get down and dirty to it, get down to the point and see the line drawings, we will realize this is not that special. They've just done a really good job of kind of rewriting a classic with this modern fabric and the lattice kind of trim. This one feels a little bit more vintage with the lace trim and like the sheer charmeuse or whatever it is. This one's fun though. Yeah, that looks young and fresh and like um, like Oscar de la Renta, maybe. This one a little less <laughs> Oscar de la Renta, but still. The line drawings are... Yeah, I guess what I, was, what I was seeing was raglan fit and flare with a split neck and a stand collar. If you took away the trim... You know, we've kind of seen this. I wonder if I even have something like this in my stash already and would just need to add the trim to it. And then you buy like a floral sateen kind of lightweight fabric, lattice trim, and bing, bang, boom. There you go. They're recommending chiffon, crepe de chine, georgette, lightweight linen, and voile. But again, I think your cotton blends, your sateen, all of that would also be fine. Something mid-weight, somewhat stable, somewhere between drapey and stable, or lightweight. You can really go anywhere on the lower end spectrum of the weight of the fabrics. All right, now I think we're getting into some vintage. Yes, we have a <laughs> Mrs. Dress and Petticoat <laughs> Vintage Vogue 1959 One Piece Dress and Petticoat Wide Neckline has front modesty panel, sleeveless, short or full length sleeves, flared skirt and two links, has released darts, joins the bodice at the waistline, petticoat and two links has gathered tiers. Okay, so it is your quintessential, what'd they say, 59? Yeah, with the like really high, op not high, but really open neckline with the little straps that are all the way at the end of your shoulder. And then you add these little itty bitty sleeves to it. That's the modesty panel. Or you can leave it out and not be modest. I won't tell. Jackie O-ish. And then here's the petticoat that goes underneath it. Fabrics are Barathea. Never seen that. Brocade, cotton, satin. Cotton, satin? No. Cotton, comma, satin or cotton, sateen? Fail, lame, metalize, percolate, flambe. <laughs> I am in a mood. Okay. Um, satin, chantong, Syrah, taffeta, velvet. Well, I couldn't think of more words that rhyme with all of those other than flambe. <laughs> That's all I got is flambe. Santa Fe. Okay. Um... Okay, we have this next one, Mrs. Dress and Capelet. It's 1952 one-piece dress and capelet. Two-piece circle skirt joins bare top bodice at waistline. Shoulder straps button to bodice in front. Capelet, capelet buttoned buttons to bodice in front. Oh, I see. That's so cute. 
look, see you have the buttons here and then your little capelet also buttons onto these buttons. That is actually so smart. This is basically like a little flap of fabric with two buttonholes on it. Genius. And I would be wanting to go to, um, oh shoot, where do they all spend their summers on uh, Mrs. Maisel? The woods, the, the little, oh gosh, or even like Dirty Dancing where they go. I guess it's like lure in real life, but similar like cat skills. I'll be going to the cat skills in my dress and capelet. Capelet for the ride up there and then ditch the capelet and hit the town. Hit the lake. Okay. Uh, chambray. Cotton broadcloth. Crepe. Embroidered cotton. Stop. Gingham. Stop. PK. Amazing. Shantong. Syrah. And taffeta. Yes. All of those are so cute. I could get behind something like this for sure. Because again, look at the line drawings. It's just a little fit and flare dress. Bodice darts at the waist and in the back little spaghetti strap, a little bit wider, but kind of like a spaghetti strap situation. And then like a huge circle skirt. But you could like reduce the circle skirt a little bit. Honestly, like the capelet is, I wonder if there's a shoulder seam here. I'd buy this for $5 from Joanne just to figure out the capelet. Because then, then this you can make out of anything. I have dresses that button on the front like that already. The capelet thing is what's most interesting to me. But there's definitely some shape to it. It's not, like I said, it's not just a straight, you know, scrap of fabric. There's some shaping. And I, I saw the darts in the back, but does it also have a shoulder seam, I wonder? Or if the darts, are the darts the only thing providing the, I bet I could even just figure it out. It can't be that hard. Super cute, though. What other things do I own that have buttons? Maybe a jumpsuit? <gasps> a jumpsuit with a capelet? Oh my gosh. Can you believe that like a couple of years ago, I was the girl that didn't even look at these vintage patterns because I didn't understand them. And now they typically lately, I mean, they've been some of my absolute favorite parts of these reviews. This one is in 1941. We don't go to the 40s very often. Long length dress with tiny kimono sleeves, shaped collarless neckline and a circular gathered top two piece skirt. The blouse features gathered fullness on either side of the V-shaped section at front and is seamed at center back and at center front below the V. The skirt cut crosswise of material at front and back joins the blouse on a lowered waistline seam, matching box pleated ruching, matching box pleated ruching optional. Oh my word. Okay, so... This is super cool. This is what they were describing with the V and then the gathers on the either side of the V and then the seam below it. I love that. This one seems to have some kind of, oh, that's the optional ruching, I think. That's cool. Dropped waist and a big gathered skirt. That isn't for me. That's a little too 1940s, early 1940s. But this is a top. Stop. So beautiful. Or I guess technically, even if you raised this up and made it like a more simple gathered skirt, not two panels and all that jazz, um, could be really nice. So fail satin, Shantung, Saran, Taffeta. Yeah, because I think they're going for more of like a, well, everybody back then dressed up to go anywhere, the women especially. So who knows? They could be going to Target, but <laughs> Target of 1941. But um these days, this is more of a dress-up ball gown situation, I think. Wow, okay. That was fun. And then now we have this little number. Jacket, skirt, and pants. So I think this is the first pattern we've seen that has... Well, no, we've seen some jacket and pants. That dress and pants, the first one. But we've never, we haven't seen anything with three pieces yet. Um, close fitting line jacket has two long two piece sleeves, princess seams, and welt pockets. Right, we've seen that even in this collection already. View A is cropped, view B has self fringe trim, pencil skirt, has waist facings, invisible back zipper, back vent, 
semi-fitted high-rise pants, half flared legs with hem-facing self-rinse trim, fly zipper, contour waistband with hook and bar closure. Again, we're not rewriting history here. This is very much been there, done that. Part of me is wondering what this jacket looks like with the skirt, the, the double-breasted skirt they did in linen. Like if they had done that skirt in this purple and put that together, I wonder, and maybe not in lilac, maybe if it were in white or black or, you know, some other, maybe like a jewel tone or something a little bit more nighttime appropriate. I kind of wonder what that would look like, but yeah, I don't have anywhere to go in this. So I will appreciate from afar. Anita. Anita is the woman that I was talking about who um, always styles Vogue stuff really cute. She does like a little bit of extra extra too. So she makes the fun things. Um, boucle linen tweed wool crepe on the fabrics there. Yeah, that all makes sense. I guess you could do it out of a denim or something. Now that double breasted skirt out of denim, let me think. That could be still a statement. Man, you know what it would look like? It would look like Britney and Justin at the MTV Awards or whatever they, when they wore the matching denim. So I don't know. Maybe I'll never be able to get that out of my head. So maybe not, but yeah, I'm still trying to make that work in my, in my head. Okay. Now we have a jacket, skirt, and pants. This one is fitted, lined, peplum. Jacket has button front closure, notched collar go days, and front inseam pocket. Skirt B has waist facing, side front, side back, center front, and center back seams with go days and invisible side seam zipper. Tapered pants fitted through the hips have a side button waistband slanted pockets and invisible side zipper. Wow. Okay. So again, beautiful. Look at the go days of this. This feels very like 30s, 40s. Like she's going off to her typewriter job. Oh, I love how the pockets are diagonal, but in a seam. Like that's a seam here. Not just, they're not welt pockets. They're in seam pockets, but that's super cool. Again, appreciating from afar because nope. I never even wore blazers, like fitted intentional professional blazers when I worked in a professional setting. So yeah, I get what they're going for here. Let me see the pants. The pants do look a little, there's something with the fit at the crotch. There's a lot of extra fabric on her. And some pulling. I imagine this waist seam is a hot mess under here. Um, but the jacket looks pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I just like, I'm trying to think of anywhere that I don't, I just, even if I were to like plan something, right? Even if I were to be like, okay, let's like plan an event where I could wear some of this stuff too. Like what? I don't even know what I would plan. Like I just have no interest in going anywhere where that, <laughs> where this would be the dress code. <laughs> That's too bad because it is, like I said, it is really beautiful and I can't appreciate it. I just, no, it's not for me, but the skirt does look super cool. I wonder what happens when you do a skirt like this out of something really lightweight. Does it just, is the point gone? Like lost the point? Really biscuit? Biscuit's unhappy about that thought. She's also hungry, so. Um, did I list these off already? Blocade, linen blends, medium weight crepe, and wool suiting. Hmm. <laughs> a lot of interesting, are we here at the end? Cause I'm about to give my wrap up. No, of course we have one sad menswear pattern here at the very end. Semi fitted online jackets have pointed collar, two piece sleeves with button cuffs, concealed front button closure and front pockets. Jacket A has gusseted patch pockets and with welts. Jacket B has conventional patch pockets. Mid-rise semi-fitted pants have waistband, belt carriers, fly front, side pockets, and back wall pockets. Short C has cargo pockets on the side and stitched hem. Pants D has regular hem. Oh my gosh. Okay. So an unlined shacket. That's what we've got here. This is a shacket. This is the go day. Not go day. What do they call it? Uh, the pocket. Oh boy. Oh boy. Wrong way. Um, gusseted. This is the gusseted pocket that they're talking about, how it's like 3D kinda. 
super fun to sew. I love how the hidden button placket is all the way hidden except for the one on the bottom. That's super cool. Yeah, I love this. Love this for the guys. And then here's the shorts. Yeah. Dang. The guys only get one pattern, but I think it really, it's amazing. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, look at that. Super cool. Love that. What fabric? Cotton blends, linen, midweight wovens, and twill. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't suggest something like, um, oh shoot, like what's that? Nylon? And then kind of like a little board short, but a little bit more elevated of a board short. And then your classic like flat front men's trouser. Nice. Yeah, nice jacket. Love it. I mean, women can make and wear this too. Um, out of your like fleece and flannels and things like that and make it into a shacket for sure. For sure. Okay. So that is it. So I think that this collection on the whole is a little bit all over the place being as we have like ball gowns plus like fancy loungewear and then a lot of like business attire. I don't know if they're like reading something that's telling them that people are going back to the office and they need these like really, really professional things. But I think that if people are going back to the office, the dress code is a lot more casual than it was before the pandemic. But what do I know? I don't go to an office. Um, so in that regard, it feels, it feels very Vogue. It feels very high end, very elevated, very dressed up, very elegant you know, very extra in all the ways that Vogue is. Vogue had gotten to a place where it was, to me, a little bit more approachable. This feels like, no, we're not that. We're going back to being like, like rich people only, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like rich vibes only. Um, that said, I did really love the short. I really loved this top with the flange. And the capelet this dress with the capelet i would want to try and figure something out about that out of my stash and with that said probably this too so insp inspiring these two for sure inspiring to look at my own stash and and think of them in a different way think of those old patterns i have in a new way but what do you guys think what i mean what are your thoughts on this pattern i know a lot of you are like me and don't have this kind of lifestyle so are you just collecting them because they're beautiful or is it all a pass? Like what's happening? Let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will see you all very soon. Bye.